Hello guys and welcome to another Applied Energistics 2 video. In this one I'll go through the fluid system which is now native to A2 in 115 and 116. I tried it in both and it works exactly the same. Previously you had to use extra cells to, uh, to get this functionality but now it's native. There are a few differences but there are many similarities so um, I thought I'd go through some of all the basic functionalities and um, a few examples and then, uh, then I'll make a new video to cover more if needed. So let's go through the items first. We have, well, the most important one, of course, the fluid storage cell. Because you store items in the normal storage cell and then fluid storage cell for fluids, of course. After that, we have storage bus, import and export. So all these three, they function exactly the same. Uh, well, the fluid level emitter as well. So if you know those parts, that should be pretty straightforward. Annihilation plane and formation plane, they also are very, well very much like the, the regular ones, but compared to extra cells, there's difference in the, at least the formation plane. Um, I'll come back to that a bit later when I talk about the system over here to the right. We have interface and tunnels. I will not talk about tunnels, uh, but I'll cover some parts of the interface as well, at least. And then the fluid terminal, which we have here. This is where you can keep a track of your... Let me turn this off. Here you can keep track of your fluids that you have in your system. And you can also use a bucket to take or put fluids back. Lava. In out. Very simple to use. So you have a different terminal for that. In your items in the regular one. So... The next thing is that perhaps we want to store it somewhere else, not in the system. Actually, I have only water in here. So if I remove this one, and this is empty, then we'll actually start to get water in that one. Back to 10. If I put this one back, we should have, well, 21. Okay, that's good. Uh, but the lava, it's over here. We have a tank here, uh, filtered to lava. And we have 25 buckets here, as we can see here. And this storage bus has the only priority plus one setting, but no filters at all. Because I filtered this one, I don't need to. But I could leave this blank and then have the, the lava put here instead. Just do like that. So like a regular storage bus. Uh, so all our lava will end up here until we're full, of course, then it will end up in this system. And when we take and put or oh, extract or put back lava, this storage bus will keep it over here. Okay, that's pretty basic. We have import and export. If I import lava from this block by doing uh, import bus like this and then you connect it then it will just suck the lava back into the network in this case perhaps create a loop but it will work with any fluid all right so let's move on to this build if you have seen this before but with extra cells it's because i made a video of this around a few years ago but there are a few some difference in how the formation plane works. So that's why this looks a bit different. The formation plane will only place a fluid when you put it into the network. Um, and that's the same with a normal formation plane. So to make this obsidian production site functional, I need to have a small subnet here you can see it's powered from these uh, fibers. You only need one, but I'd like to put two. And so this interface and this formation plane, they are, well, 
they are a network of their own. And like you see here that I've filtered on lava over here. I, perhaps I don't need to do that, but it's still there for some reason. This is an export bus that will always export lava. This interface will receive that lava and put it into the internal buffer and then try to store it somewhere. And we have no storage, so when it can store it out in the open, thanks to this formation plane, it will be put here. So if I remove this block, then we can place lava like this. Simple. In my system, I have decided to have 10 obsidian at all times. So if I remove those, we'll first use up the internal buffer and then fill up again and generate so we have 10 of them until this level emitter turns off. So on this side, we have a setting on this level emitter to keep 10 obsidian and we will emit a redstone signal when we are below 10. That will turn on this toggle bus and that will in, in turn activate this annihilation plane. So make sure to save a channel for, for this path. And that will break the obsidian, send it in, and when we have 10 this will turn off and then we will not break it anymore and the system goes back to this steady state. So if I take half of them away, empty, off, refill, and repeat. We can also use order crafting for this. Um, it's very, it should be quite similar to how it worked in extra cells. If I go into this emitter and I put a crafting card here, and I have this setting to be emit redstone to craft obsidian then this uh, level is inactive i can't it doesn't matter what it is but now it shows up as a craftable item uh, we still have nine buckets here so now how it works is when i order uh, if i go up here if i order one you can see we have a crafting plan we have a, a crafting cpu to craft one, start. And that's how fast it was. So you can see it over here. And when we started the job, this one starts to uh, starts to activate this toggle bus. When we have received all the crafting, or well, the entire crafting job, it will turn off again. See so if I now order, let's see, we have like six left. And if I order 10 of them, We quickly got our first, but now we're out of lava, I think. All right, we should have enough. We have the internal buffer plus that one. But anyway, now we have our 10. This is turned off. That one is free. And we have the 10 here. But now if we order 10 more, then it will halt. Because we will have nothing here and nothing here, and this will be locked in this state. And that means this one will be locked in that state as well, and not be available for any other crafting. So I think we better give it some. Annihilation plane, simple way to get lava or fluids into the system. And they will end up here. Okay, and now it's done, refilling, everything is stable. Very good. So then we can move on to the final setup. I just wanted to have a way to show the fluid emitter uh, or fluid level emitter. It works exactly the same. So this one will keep 10 buckets of water in the system at all times. Emit when we are below 10. Now we have 21. So if I remove 10 buckets of water, then, uh, well, then this will be lit. 
this toggle bus will turn on, same as we had here. And this annihilation plane will suck up water and then it will regenerate and then will suck up more and it will repeat. And then it looks like this because I'm exporting water here. Just active with signal so I can turn it off. And it's exporting water into this matter condenser to build the singularity. I think you need a 64k storage though because you need 256,000 energy. But we can see here that our water is now going down. But it will loop around 10 because this one will be turned on and off and on and off to keep that level of 10. And this will well, slowly build up. For fun we can place an acceleration card here. I don't know if we can keep 10 now. Or Seems like they can keep up. <laughs> but the sound is actually quite annoying. We get energy quickly though. Alright, so I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover in this video. I might make another one. Uh, but uh, make sure to check the video description and playlist for more information. If you have questions, you know where to post them. And uh, well, thanks for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye bye.